I'm very proud of what I do, but I feel right. like someone who is not part of that industry, it, I think their immediate perception is, oh, he just plays games all day, right. which doesn't seem professional. But... <laughs> For the outsiders, yeah. 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 A game designer is someone who starts from scratch with nothing and they, they build the game up from there. Usually that process involves some level of brainstorming where they're coming up with the idea how it works. Then they will write the rules and create a prototype and actually play the game. Usually with just some friends to see if it actually works. There's repeated play testing until the game gets to a point where they're ready to send it out to a blind play tester, which is someone who play tests a game without the designer there present. Um, and then finally having that finished product that you either self-publish or submit to a publisher. Part of what draws me to games is the power that we have to tell stories and create experiences. And so I try really hard to make sure that that's part of my design process. So when I approach games, especially after I've kind of discovered that this is what draws me to games, this is why I'm passionate about games, when I approach my game designs, I'm really careful to think about what I want the theme to be, and I explore what I want the feeling to be when the player approaches the game. For example, when in Pass the Buck, I want them to f have the feeling of being in a corporate environment where everybody's shoving work off onto them. They feel like they're buried in other people's work, and the only way that they can get rid of their work is by shoving it off onto other other people. And so it's this sort of like process of figuring out how I can capture story and emotion through game mechanics, like harnessing the game mechanics in order to enhance the experience. The Resistance was the first game that I really tried to share with the world. I'd made other games before, but this was the first one where I was like, this is something that I think is good and I, I want people to play it. The Resistance originally came about by me posting it online. Um, before that, I had you know, played Mafia Werewolf, had ideas about how to make it better, played it with friends, and they surprisingly really liked it. And I wanted other people to play it, so I posted it on BoardGameGeek.com. Uh, that's a site where people can upload print and play games. And so what's nice about the original version of Resistance is that you could just play it with a set of cards, any deck of playing cards. So people did that, they printed off my, I think it was literally one or two page rule set. They played it, they liked it, and what was nice is that you can review games online as well. People did that, and that was really cool. That was great, that was my first thing ever, and people liked it, so that was neat. Uh, and more and more people did that, and eventually I got contacted by a publisher, which was Indie Boards and Cards, uh, run by Travis Worthington. And he asked to publish the game. I said, hmm, maybe, maybe. And uh, I talked to some other publishers as well, uh, and finally I decided that Travis was the way to go. And so he picked it up and you know, we worked together on getting the rules just right, the art just right. And about four or five months later, uh, it, was, it was published to the world. More than ever in history, people can be their own creators. Uh, their own creators, their own publishers, in control of more aspects of releasing a game than ever before. These, oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> This is some really bad copy that we wrote just to try to help get us in the right brain space. Do you have what it takes to manage a kitchen full of angsty sous chefs? Yes, chef! Can you impress a panel of judges with your latest creation? Yes, chef! Can you cobble together something delicious out of a hot mess? Yes, chef! There you go. <laughs> uh, and also, not the name of the game anymore, right. so uh, had to move on Doesn't from that. Doesn't make sense anymore. Right. Luckily, with this being our second Kickstarted game, we kind of know what we're doing this time. <laughs> uh, having gone through it once before, we know a little bit about what stuff we need up front, what stuff we need ready to be able to, to hit the go button. This game that we're working on now is called Competition Kitchen. We've been working on it for about nine months uh, and are within a month of uh, setting up the Kickstarter for that, probably like two to three weeks away. Yeah, I mean, I think competition kitchen. Kickstarter helps when you don't have the capital you need up front. Uh, yep. It allows people who are interested in, in the project or the product to voice their support, and not just that, but provide monetary support as well to help the project come to fruition. One of the conversations we had before we put fisticuffs up was we have to be okay with the fact that we might not make our goal. And what that means is that there isn't enough interest in this product to make it sustainable. And 
that might kind of be a gut check and it might suck, but if that's what it is, then we need to know that, which would prevent us from going to a bank Securing a loan, <laughs> saying, "Okay, we've got oh, this man. plan to make yeah, our money back," right. and then it falls flat on its face, and we don't know what to do from there. So you you get this idea of like, if you fall short, mm-hmm. uh, it could be because probably. of marketing or something like yeah. that. And it, there's probably a lot of factors that went into it, but sure. it means that cool, you need to come up with a new idea, or you need to tweak this idea because it doesn't have the support that it needs to exist. Right. Which again sucks <laughs> but is sometimes true kickstarter is also really great in community as well a lot of people who are passionate about board games they go to kickstarter and they go what are the new things that are coming out what's fun and exciting right now and they'll take a risk on something and i don't know if you have a ton of communities of people who are always willing to do that kickstarter can be a place for people with new creative brave ideas to find other like-minded people to support those. And that's really cool. It's a weird little platform that thing is there. My strategy on Kickstarter actually was to not look at it. You know, at first I was, and I was like, then I stopped. And then all I would do then was look at the summaries that they sent, like at the end of the day or something like that. And that was enough um, until the last week. And then I was like, oh, I should probably look at this more. I had lots of feedback at the beginning when this was just an idea that nobody's gonna buy this game. I feel like the only thing that holds anyone back more than anyone else is themselves. And you know, if you if you listen to the people that tell you no, then nothing in this world would ever happen. Thank you.